the beginning we find Eve, a designing woman if ever there was one. She designed her own frock and called it Fig One. The Stone Age woman dressed in bark and carried a flint for the heads of spears and probably husbands too. In the spacious days of Henry V, Queen Catherine wore this magnificent gown, complete with mountainous heart-shaped headdress. Catherine of Aragon, Henry VIII's first wife, was almost as picturesque, though Henry would twit her and yawn when she read him a bedtime story. If all the wives had got together, Henry wouldn't have thought there was so much in six appeal after all. As it was, he nearly swore his own head off. And when a Stuart lady of Charles II's reign got into the habit of riding, this is the riding habit she got into. Clap hands, here comes Charles II's Nell Gwynne in her court dress with her curls and curtsies. A day dress of George I's reign, when fashions were as gorgeous as the period. The second George was bedazzled by bewigged and bepowdered beauties, which might account for a possible bee in his bonnet. The early Victorian maiden treasured her billet doux as the modern girl her ballyhoo. And this is Miss Gwen Lally of pageant fame, who with her players has conjured up the fashionable past. But let's follow the evolution of Eve still further to the gay pyjama suit of today, or rather, tonight. If that isn't brazen enough, go to modern sports clothes, with flannel bags for the golfer and shorts for the courts. If your great-grandmamas could only see as much of you as we do. And this natty, or rather, netty ensemble, that the modern woman takes with her to lunch, seems more convenient than a lot of hoops anyway. Then, of course, you must have a special dress for cocktails, though nobody has yet invented one for cocoa. When evening falls, the modern man falls too, for a chic frock like this. But what will the future show? Well, you can see for yourself, perhaps. <laughs>